Hey everyone, Jamie Lee here from Bird Tricks and welcome back to Fixing My Subscribers Most Common Parrot Behavioral Problems, part two. My next subscriber that I'm gonna be helping is named Mary and she wrote in about Maggie, her cockatiel. It reads, this is Maggie, a 15 year old male cockatiel. He currently eats a blend of Harrison's maintenance pellets mixed with a sunflower seed free seed mix. Along with that, all my birds are offered fresh fruits and veggies throughout the day, usually pureed into a baby food consistency since they like that texture more. Maggie is epileptic with seizures triggered from stress. Multiple times we've tried to transition her or him <laughs> into a healthier diet, but even a normal conversion over the course of a month stressed him out enough to trigger a seizure. What would be the best way to transition Maggie into a healthier diet without the stress? As requested, I included a video clip with Maggie post seizure that we filmed for the vet. This was about a week ago into an attempted diet change. He's gone back to the seed and pellet mix. Oh, this is difficult. <laughs> um, the good news is, as she did mention, that they follow my homemade seed mix recipe that is featured here on my channel. So that's awesome, because I know it's a quality seed mix that he's actually getting. Um, however, obviously having 70% pellets and then the rest is seeds is not super ideal. You wanna get those fresh foods into the body. But this is a pretty unique case with seizures. I don't think I've ever dealt with this specific of a scenario with uh, the diet transition being such a stressful um, transition. Again, kind of going back to one of my previous answers, I find that social eating works really, really well and just including your bird in the food prep process. When I make my seasonal feeding system, it takes six hours, you guys. It's a process um, and I'm tripling my normal recipes. So I'm like, I'm making a huge batch for my birds. Um, I'm also feeding a lot of birds. So I go through it a lot faster than the average person. Um, but I find that including the bird in the process is really helpful. Also, I think there's a misunderstanding about diet conversion being making your bird hungry. That's not what it's about. It's about constantly offering healthy foods all the time. So your bird always has the opportunity to explore awesome, good, nutritious foods. It shouldn't be going hungry. It should always have the opportunity to check something new out. I think one of the tools that a lot of people overlook is using what your bird already likes as a tool for diet conversion. So what I mean by that is if Maggie is taking on these pellets amazingly well, and it sounds like he is, use those pellets for diet conversion by powdering them and mixing them into things to kind of give that same flavor that he's used to while also introducing a brand new food. You can use that kind of stuff in birdie bread or in recipes, especially with fresh food with just that dusting, or you can even push those pellets into fresh food so that he kind of has to dig them out. And in the process, he's tasting these other foods. It doesn't need to be something that's stressful where food is ever withheld. It should just be that all these good foods are always offered. Uh, the other misunderstanding I think there is about diet is that fruits and veggies go hand in hand. I think a lot of people always say like, I offer fresh fruits and vegetables. And <laughs> I always hate hearing that because they're not equal. They're not equal in nutritional value or anything else. So set the fruits aside and use it as a high value treat reward instead of as a daily part of your bird's diet. Awesome, so this next submission is from somebody who lives in Boise, Idaho. So yes, fellow Idahoan. Um, let's go ahead and read it. Hello from Boise, Idaho. My Nande Conyer probably isn't overly dependent on me, but his behavior makes me gravitate towards this thought process. My name is Lindsay and I have a question of how to remedy a certain behavior from my Nande Conyer. Here's a little info on him. His name is Gizmo, he's six months old and his diet is a birdie smorgasbord, AKA can pick what they want from what I set out. So her question is, Gizmo tends to follow me everywhere throughout our home and rarely spends independent time with outlets that I offer him, such as a homemade playground with assorted toys, uh, foraging kebabs with sunflower seeds inserted in, in them, etc. 
More often than not, even after having routine training sessions, he will fly towards me, coming in fast, always lands on my head, even when my hand is offered, uses my hair as a slide or escalator to come down and then begins aggressive behavior. Not sure what I'm missing in order to raise him properly. For context, he was purchased through a bird store owner who had hand fed him since hatching. He already has gone through his first molt and hasn't shown signs of hormonal behavior right now. Thanks for the opportunity to have this riddle solved. Love what you guys do. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Let's check out this video. Oh, okay. So she gave me a link to this video. So I'm actually going to show it to you guys. This restarts the preening stuff, and he'll pull out hair. Ah, like he is right now. It's almost as if he treats me like a mom bird. Um, I don't know. It's hard to describe. So this one, I have kind of a few different avenues that I'm thinking about going with it, depending on the exact situation. The first thing is obviously the diet is lacking. Again, this is just a common thing. I find so many people are just not giving the right diet. Um, so I'm going to just like skip over that because I feel like it's been a theme throughout all of these and I don't want to just like go say it 10 times. So go research your diet guys. <laughs> There's links in this video description for sure now. If there wasn't, there definitely is now. So one of the things that I see is when people want to have their bird out a lot of the time like out of the cage and just hanging out with them but there's no structure to it there's not really a goal with it and so what ends up happening is it's just kind of chaotic and the bird is looking for stuff to do looking for stuff to get into and all the interactions tend to switch to having fun with my human to you can't do that can't touch that can't have that can't do this can't go there and it turns into kind of like these negative interactions between you and your bird because there's so much that they literally shouldn't get into that could hurt them. And so a lot of the times we can't help but keep that away from the bird, take that away from the bird, keep the bird away from that, move the bird. Um, and what ends up happening is we're just doing a whole bunch of interactions and experiences that the bird doesn't want. And it ends up making our overall relationship with our bird go downhill. So even though you feel good because your bird was out of the cage for a long time, overall your interactions were actually bad versus if you would have had your bird out for a shorter amount of time, been 100% focused on your bird and had amazing interactions that in the long term would make your relationship better. That's kind of where the quality over quantity thing comes into play. I will say though, in this particular situation, it sounds like a lot of the treats are in the normal diet. So just having that seed mix or whatever it is in the evening, I feel like is making this conure a little bit more high energy instead of using it as a tool for like foraging and expending that energy that way or specific functional flight training and getting physical energy out that way. You know, there's two different types of energy that we want to get out with our birds. One of it is, one of them is mental. We want our bird to problem solve and think about things and think through things and really use their brain. And then the other one is physical. We want them to be active, whether they can fly or not. We want them to be moving and getting around and expending physical energy as well. If they don't, they're pent up both mentally and physically and they usually take it out on us. I will say I saw a little bit of hormones. Conyers are kind of notorious for cuddling and snuggling into little nooks and crannies. Phoebe, my son Conyer, loves nestling into people's necks um, where the hair is and stuff, especially on flight trips. She usually gravitates to the photographer because the photographer isn't running around like crazy. They're just staying mostly in the middle of everything. And she'll just nestle in and be like, cool, I'll be here. <laughs> Let me know when you're all done. Um, but Conyers tend to love to nestle into little areas like that. The best thing to do is to kind of avoid it. You know that it's a problematic area where you're gonna get bit on the neck. Put your hair up because that might be one of the things since this Conyers using it as a slide or an escalator, I think she said. Uh, you just know that it's problematic. Put your hair up, avoid that situation. You know that 98% of the, the time your bird gets into your hair, it's gonna be a fail. 
uh, try to avoid being in that situation and letting your bird fail. Also give your bird something else to do. So instead of having to remove him or force him down or anything like that, help him make the decision to get out of there. Use target training or even luring if you absolutely have to. Um, target training is better, that way your bird's really making the decision to come out and do something else, which is an incompatible behavior. The bird cannot target the end of the chopstick uh, on the table and bite your neck at the exact same time. So think about those in incompatible behaviors that you can cue or offer an opportunity for where your bird will choose what you're wanting it to choose. Um, a lot of the times with bird training and just bird behavior, we're trying to find ways to make what we want worthwhile for the bird and make them want it. Uh, so getting creative with that is really, really important. And it sounds like using the seed mix that's in the evening for better things is really the way to go. Another thing with flight training is that when birds are flying to shoulders or heads, it's usually avoidance. They're intentionally avoiding landing on your hand because they don't want you to choose where they go or have 100% control over where they're at. They do this so that you can't get them and they're avoiding you. Um, the main thing that you need to do is make sure that you always deliver reinforcement from your hand. So if the bird, if you offer your hand and the bird lands over here or lands on your shoulder, just simply target down until you get them to your hand and make sure reinforcement only ever comes from your hand. Keep in mind if a bird is going here, there's some sort of reinforcement just naturally there. So you might need a larger incentive to get them to do the behavior you actually want them to do. That comes back to treat value. Um, I hope I'm not going too far with all of this. We explain these concepts in great depth and detail in our family friendly parrot formula. And I think I'm used to doing consultations where people have watched that and understand the language that I'm just like, bam, 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 going there. So if anything seems like you guys aren't getting it or there's holes in, in uh, the answers, I think that you will find those filled in from my Family Friendly Parrot Formula um, videos. Okay, the last part of this is that this conure doesn't seem to play with toys. So I do have a couple videos, one demoing with my Budgie Blueberry and one demoing with Jinx, my Macaw, on how to train your bird to actually play with and start destroying toys. Now, the good news is eventually you don't always have to use treats. It becomes self-reinforcing for birds to destroy things. The interesting part is you kind of have to find what your bird's niche is and find what toy is going to be the one that you end up training with. It might be different for your bird. Jinx was very receptive to the toys I used in that video, but later I found he's even more receptive to like vine balls and things that he can hold in his foot and have stuff in them. He was totally into that when we did this promo with Parrot Joy and she made this specific toy for my three sons, but I actually ended up using it as a foot toy for all of my macaws because it just worked so much better. So think outside the box, think foot toys, think maybe training your bird with toys inside the cage or on the outside of the cage or on a tabletop, whatever might transfer best for you or work best for you. You know, with Jinx, I actually did an O'Flock episode over on Patreon where I worked with him inside his aviary as well. So for those of you that feel like working on a tabletop with training your bird to play with toys won't translate to the cage, think about doing all that training inside the cage. Um, there's a lot of different ways to get creative with convincing our birds to be a little bit more independent and learn how to self-entertain. So the last submission I'm gonna take is from one of my subscribers named Kirsten. She wrote and said, hi, Jamie, Dave, and Capri. Roscoe is an eight-year-old green cheek that I have had since he was three weeks old. His diet is a pellet formula from a pet store along with fresh vegetables, fruit, etc. He hates shaker cups. We always tend to forget. So whoever is holding the bird at the time someone else takes a drink gets a nasty bite. It's abnormal for him to bite. Attached is an example of the Conyer versus cup. Any recommendations? are appreciated. Okay, again, <laughs> last time I'm gonna mention that the foundation of diet needs to be in place to be able to make like the most amazing progress ever with training. So please look into the right diet. Um, fruit shouldn't be a normal part of the everyday diet for your bird, just FYI. Oh, please use a really good pellet mine on my website. Please understand more about diet. Okay, I'm just gonna keep skipping over all that. But anyways, if that proper foundation was in place, what I would recommend is when whenever your bird really dislikes something, you wanna find a way to associate it positively. So something about that cup is driving this bird up the wall, but there is a safe distance at which the bird is accepting of the cup and won't overly react. 
Obviously, it's not a few inches like in this video where the bird just kind of attacked it and then moved on. Ideally, what you wanna do is reward the bird for a non-reaction, a disinterest, um, not caring about the cup, basically. So having it at a distance, almost like I show with a power pause with Bean here on my channel, um, and having that cup and having that bird not care or do something else, cue a different behavior, cue targeting, even target around the cup eventually, and work your way closer and closer to that cup with this disinterest, this non-reaction, this I have something better to do. Um, but in order to do that, you need to have something high value you can use as your tool and as your reward. And based on this diet, it doesn't sound like you have something super duper awesome that overdoes or overcomes the hate <laughs> for the shaker cup. And that's kind of where we're at and that's why we push treat value so much is because yeah, your bird might do just fine on a crappy diet, working on some training that it really enjoys, but what about when you need it to do something it doesn't necessarily want to do? That same treat will no longer be worth it because of that treat value and that foundation not being in place. So that's why I really urge people to do the right diet so that your treats matter and you can actually use them for these more complex and unique behaviors that you need from your bird. Thank you guys so much to all of my subscribers who submitted their questions for including the photos and the video. I feel like it really helps the essence of what your issues are and try to explain them to a broader audience. If you like the style of this video and you wanna see more, please let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear your guys' feedback since I've never done a video like this before. Um, can't wait to hear from you guys and I hope that you have success moving forward and fixing all of your bird's problems. If you need more help, check out my training courses at Bird Tricks com and also look into one-on-one -on -one consultations with my husband and I. We offer consultations year round depending on what your needs are. We have one-off consultations or consultation packages which I find do really well because then we act as your accountability partner. So not only do we give you advice on that first consultation but we also hold you responsible and accountable for implementing that advice and getting to the next step and so on and so forth. So I look forward to working with you guys in the future. Thank you so much for watching and thank Thanks again for subscribing and submitting your questions. Thanks so much, guys.